who you're with, or you just like to come to public information meetings, that's okay too. And then if you did park at the Maritime Garage, um, Rocky and Sonia are in the back, and um, we have validations for you. So, I know I've spoken to many of you over many, many, many years about Liberty Square. Tony DeAndre and his group, I don't know if there's, I know Tony couldn't be here, is there somebody representing? Hi, oh great, how are you? Um, Pat Brescia, um, Bruce Gall and his group, um, the gentleman from 99 Bottles, right? Yes. Um, and there's been so much confusion about the management of the parking lot, the maintenance of the parking lot, the improvements, people um, parking there for weeks, days, people that go to Betts Park parking in Liberty Square, um, parking, people that live around the area parking in Liberty Square, and I know that's been an issue for so many years. Um, during this last budget cycle, the Parking Authority decided that they would include Liberty Square under their management. Um, and I know it's been a very long haul, so it's been very frustrating, very challenging, and to manage Liberty Square, which is very important to the city, very important to the economic development, but here we are, so that's a great thing. So let me introduce the team to you right now. Um, this is John Hannafin. He is, works for the Connecticut DOT, and he is the project manager for facilities and transit. Almost as long as my title. And this is Vanessa Valadari. She is our senior civil engineer. And Eric Raines is um, a partner and member. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, John is going to talk about what's going on with the state's drainage project, which is the, the city's drainage project is folded into that. So we're partnering with the state of Connecticut, which is a great thing. And today, with all the rain, actually in the last few days, this has actually come to a good time. So it's all yours. All right. Welcome everyone. Hope you guys stay dry from that last storm we had a little while ago. So as the walk bridge progresses, we have some activities that are ongoing this summer. Uh, right now, we are focusing on the uh, drainage activities that are happening near Liberty Square and along Goldstein Place and behind, uh, just off Goldstein Place. And these other items are ongoing work that's uh, scheduled for the summer. We're not talking about that tonight. So Goldstein Place drainage. Uh, work started September 10th. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the area, we have the uh, Goldstein Place. We have Route 136 out here, and um, oops, sorry, up and around. Um, <coughs> we acquired the former Penn property, which is I think 610 uh, Goldstein Place. And we need to address some drainage concerns with that property. So what we are doing is we're putting in a series of catch basins and uh, some connecting pipes to bring the water out to the 136 drainage in the state roadway. And we're going to use Goldstein Place as a uh, path to run the drainage from the back property here and bring the water out to Route 136. This work is fairly short term. It's about five weeks. It's going to be taking place during the day. Not during rush hour. Uh, it's not going to have that much noise. Should shouldn't be too much of a disruption. Um, so we're going to work in the shoulder of Route 136, and then we'll work our way back towards the back of the property, and eventually work around these buildings and in here in this area in order to collect that water. But at all times, traffic will be maintained and local access will be maintained. This drawing here shows the actual alignment of the drainage. Like I said, we start out here on Route 136, and these are existing manholes that we are working from. We'll put a new manhole here in the middle of the street. We'll run it down Goldstein with another manhole back over to here, and then we'll have some catch basins, a series of catch basins. These catch basins will catch. Sorry about that. These catch basins will catch that water that's being collected in this property. This is a low point right now and we want to be able to remove that water so it doesn't spill off the adjacent properties and cause any, prob any problems in the area. So when this water collects down in this area, it'll go into these catch basins, it'll come down Goldstein Place, and it'll dump into the state system out here at Route 136. At the same time, we'll have a little stub connection here with a manhole that will, the city will talk about it, but that will collect the drainage from the parking lot and allow it to also go off to the Route 136 main trunk line. This drawing here is just another 
high-level view from the satellite image showing the, the area that's uh, the impact construction areas. So like I said, there'll be some intermittent work along the one lane here on, on Fort Point Street. This is Route 136. And then we'll have the work along Boasting Place and some uh, intermittent parking impacts, which is the white blue. And then we'll have the drainage lines that will cross the former kennel property and in order to connect these catch basins. And that basically is that basically is the extent of the drainage work. but they won't be out in the street. Like on Route 136, they won't start the night of rush because they're going to rush out. And then, um, but will it end at 3.30 p.m.? Yeah, I think uh, Chuck's here. They might have to work away at 3.30. Yes, that's the end. Yeah, 3.30 So that's, um, I'm just, we have a bank. Light pole 
um, on this side of the lot and then doing some landscaping after we are done on the areas that we disturbed. So in other words, we're going to bring that lot to the standard parking authority uh, lots that we have throughout town. If you guys have been to the library uh, at Belden Avenue, we, we did that about a month ago and it was a big difference. So that's the main idea that we want to do. Uh, so the schedule, just what we did is the city part, we were planning to start on September 24th, but the drainage would have to start a little bit earlier. And the reason for that is that although it's two separate projects, uh, the state are doing the, just pretty much going through here, just going straight here, and we, so they have the manhole on the road, this one here. The city part of the project is to take care of all this side. We are adding two basins here, two metals, and then we're going to connect to the state portion of it. The thing is that we have one contractor to do all the work. That's how we ended up negotiating to do this work. The weather didn't help us this week, because for them to start as planned here, they have to take about 14 feet down, and we have a very low tide this week when it's working. But as soon as we start taking 14 feet down, all the amount of rain that we're supposed to get this week would be a very bad move. We're going to end up flooding everybody instead of helping with the flood. So the contractor contacted us and said, do you mind if we swap? Do you mind if I start? Because they were going to be up to here in about a week and then start here and connect us. So then they can continue and then we can start the lot. Because when they do this, there will be no connection to the main line yet. We said, okay, go ahead, and you can start working in the city part of the drainage. That's why you guys are seeing the machines out there. The space, we have two police officers to help, and what we're blocking is just the area that we need to get the work done for the day. So that's why we have some parking uh, being blocked there. Uh, eventually, when we're going to really repave the lot, we're going to shut down completely both lots and we're going to arrange for parking across the street on that spot. Because when we start, as soon as they connect here and they move, we're going to close the lot because then we need to start doing all the improvements to get the lot done. We have to bring power from here. The taxi district has our meter here. We have to feed the shipping stations that we're putting on and then we have to add the electrical pole in here. So in order to bring all those concrete and mill and pave everything, we're not going to have the lot be used. Everybody will be able to do a temporary parking across the street in this area. The parking authority will going to secure the area and we're going to put signs so everybody will be aware that they have to come here for parking. Uh, we expect this work with the paving to happen between two or three weeks after the drainage is done. So if everything goes well, we should have this complete by October 1st. I mean, by end of October. So did this clarify now the portion of the drainage? I know it was a little confusing. It's very confusing, that's okay. Um, so basically you started up over here and you're doing some work which is impacting parking up there. Eventually the state's part is going to kick in because they need to dig a lateral here. So there's going to be some parking impact, which I think we'll reference on the other slide. And I just was hoping then for an explanation of what those parking impacts are. Once that's complete, the parking impact is going to be the entire lot, but you guys do a great job of getting that stuff paved and restriped and everything. But we are kind of the only unknown and it's not something Best control is that you're not going to be digging trenches and while we're still getting all this water. Is that a good summary of what's, what we're talking about? So then the only unanswered question is my first question, which was, what are the blue impacts of parking while you're doing the trench on the state side going down to the Along with Goldstein, Chuck, you want to answer that? Yeah, uh, we, we will work, uh, uh, folks, we work today. We, we had to knock off a little bit early. It really started raining hard, but it's our intent to work five days a week. You may or may not have to work a Saturday or Sunday too, if it comes to it. But we we should be able to get this done and all this done uh, in, in the three weeks that we.
committed, assuming we are having some issues, even though it's supposed to be low tides this week, this storm is actually pushing in. We've had a couple of extreme high tides here the last couple days already. Welcome to Norwalk. Yeah, which, which impacts some of the work down in here. But when we're here, we, we should be able to, we're using trench boxes, be able to get access in here. Uh, policemen are doing the best they can to uh, let people go. But right now, we're working on this line right here. It's shallower. Uh, it's not uh, as prone to issues with uh, flooding, so we can work on these rain days. We've got both these manholes set and working on, on uh, this section tomorrow and probably be up here on, on uh, Friday. But, uh, you know, it's fairly big equipment. Uh, we plate this every night and get out of the way, open up the parking lot. So we, during the day, people can't park in some of those spaces? That's well, correct. Most of them are open. All this area is open for now. Yeah. And here we are moving the spaces as we move forward with construction. Yeah. So we're trying to minimize how many spaces we take here. We're not taking any more than we need to to, to do the work safely. The, the police are blocking lot. the whole lot off. They're not letting anybody into that east portion of the lot. I, I was out there today. That's that's not 100. percent There were people. They were they were allowing some parking up in here. We had three or four people up in here. There was part of them were already there. They, they, yeah. they, yeah, they those were there. Yeah. Those were tents. There's 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 tenants. There. There. Stay there all the time. We'll talk to them in the morning. We'll yeah. explain to them that we need as much space. I can show you a picture. I took 20 minutes. I believe. Don't yes, we, yes, we let people in. But we'll, we'll talk, the we idea is, is, but then, you know, sometimes if the police does things different than what we were telling the contractor to do, the contractor is really minimizing the space that they are taking. So tomorrow we'll go there personally. I'll ask the police to keep as many spaces open as possible. And they open a lot across the street? Because I went to park across the we, street. We couldn't, we couldn't yet because of the Oyster Festival. Well, uh, it could have been open today. No, because they yeah. rent the Oyster Festival for a week after the Oyster mm -hmm. Festival. Right. So for this week, we do not have accommodations, but we will okay. start having for next week. And then, yes, you will be able to park there. So the other consideration um, that we need to kind of think through and accommodate is that quite a few of the businesses get delivery trucks um, multiple times a day, starting with the big trucks that deliver the stuff to 99 bottles, and then the smaller UPS and FedEx, which nobody can control, including UPS and FedEx. And nobody really knows when those trucks come and go. What I've noticed is that they're now parking, double parking on 136. Um, which is not necessarily a good thing for them to do, but we should have some sort of mitigation for deliveries that we can all work with. Well, the police should be helping them to get to where they should be. As I said, there would be no closures here. I'll you talk to them should. tomorrow. Yeah, I, I understand we're going to help them that tomorrow, but as of now, there is no reason why the trucks cannot have access. Uh, the construction trucks that use the back there come in and out all day without a problem. I don't see any manholes on the left side over here. Are they not connecting? No, it is connecting, but this is just a part of the city, so that's why you're not seeing the rest. You see, I just have a partial of the drawing, but if we go back to the state drawing, it does connect right in here. There is one manhole in you here, Another one here, and, and then an actual existing one right in here. And that's on the left side of the property, in front of Liberty Square on the left side. It is, uh, where is the lawn area? Very close to the sidewalk, a little behind the sidewalk. And what are those pay stations you're talking about? You're the talking pay about stations them. is because this lot will be enforced by the parking authority. Is that right? Yes. So then, in order for them to pay for their hourly fee, Two pay stations will be installed around this area here. One here to serve this lot, the other here. So people will have access. On and what about the tenants? Well, we can talk about that a little after. She's talking about- I'm just talking about, about the construction part. Right. And then we're we'll gonna talk to about the management of the park. Yeah. So, yes, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering, you said there's going to be 58 parking sites plus three in is that the full length of Liberty Square? Yes. And so if you see, we number here the, the drawings. So what are we going to, what is... How is many here? parking spaces are there now? There's about 60. 60? Yes. 60? Yes. 
So what happened is that we added, you see, we're using also this area here. We, we're going to put four here. But with the Shemitah standards for the ADA, they have to be a little bit wider, and then we have to keep the ramps. So that's why, although we add four, we lose a little bit with the ADA. So we have a total of 61, 58 regular spaces, three ADA. Handicap. Mm -hmm. But you're not really adding four on the left end because you're you're taking two away from the No, what side. I mean is that on the new configuration yeah. is showing parking here. As of now, there is none, no parking. Yeah, but you have right. parking yeah. along the, the curb on both but sides. There were, there's, there, you yeah, but the thing is that away. this is the way that we can get yeah, the people yeah. to come in and make the turn and this A replacement, not a net add. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. According to your pictures here, I don't know if you're going to get into it in the future. Uh, entrances into Liberty Square or either one. If we didn't disturbed? change that, is it still one way coming this way? If you see the arrows here, so you come here, you can still access this way. Two ways coming in and out, and we the lot is wide enough that it can be two way. So we're not changing anything to the footprint <laughs> of the lot. We're right. just. Repaving and we're going to restrike to have a better configuration. Are you planning on putting a traffic light at the uh, main entrance to the square? Not as part of this project. This goes back to DOT for the future. John, do you want to have Yeah, right now that's under study right now. We're, we're addressing that under the Walkbridge project. We'll have more to cover that. Okay, so if you do that, you're going to be aligning the Vets Park entrance to line up with the Goldstein place? Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do that yet or not. That's still under. Part of the repaving, are you kind of uh, even out the grade for the entire lot so it's all the same grade? We're not going to make it level because of the water. We're going to make it the drainage flow better to the new basins that we're uh, installing in. So, yes, there will be a little bit of wind rain in the whole lot so we improve the, the drainage in there. So, in front of my building, in front of, on, on, on the right hand side. 19, which isn't part of your parking plan, but my parking lot in the front is a, is a low spot. They're going to regrade that so everything flows into the drain on the yes, from, uh, from the city property on. Okay. That's it. I know there was discussion about possibility of eliminating the entrance on the east, the one way entrance on the east, and that's gone away. For this part now, we are not changing any entrance. We are still keeping this off. I, I see that. My question is, what is the logic for not changing it? Because I thought there was a lot of discussion about the value of eliminating that. Well, to be honest, I, I didn't even, no, no one in our department considering closing that entrance. We thought that would be a good way to get people in as well. Uh, I'm not sure in the future when there will be more projects happening in the area for the walk, if eventually this will need to be closed. But as of now, just as for the parking authority, they didn't plan to, to close. They didn't take that in consideration. Yeah, we, we send out an 
in the yard, uh, roughly 20 feet. We're, we're a long ways away from some of the containers down there. It's just off the edge of the sidewalk. So you're, you are going to trench in there and have a yes. excavator and stuff like that? So. Yes. We, when, when we're out here, we'll end up having to close down some one lane of uh, Fort Point during the day. If you guys could just give me a heads up of when you finally get to that point so that I know if I have something scheduled that I can address that. Yeah, our construction group, uh, Joe, did you, uh, there's a message just to coordinate with Jackie on the uh, right, chat. Can you guys go back when they can yeah. work in that area? They can let them know. Yeah, I just need a heads up because then I can move things around. Yeah, and, and Sue will let you know. Yeah. Okay. I, I need to go back to that entrance. Um, part of my concern, one is safety because people speed in there and, and it's, they use it as to avoid the traffic on the line. The big issue is the actual bridge. Uh, and that gray is sculpts down into a living square. So there, I think there's a catch base to right about where the sidewalk starts to bend in. Up, up on Fort Point Street. Um, yep. right, right in there, a little bit to the left. There is a catch base. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to catch a lot and all the water comes down. So that was one of the discussions was to straighten the curve to eliminate that egress and to um, change that grade there and eliminate that down, down the slope. Uh, again, this is a DOT road. We cannot do as a city any major changes here without they approving, but it's good that you bring up this point. So when they are looking at this area, they may take in consideration that maybe it will be a good idea to to close this. Well, I have brought it up before. So it's, it's, okay. It does kind of it does kind of make sense that if you're going to change the entrance, change it while you're doing all the work rather than doing the work twice. Well, because you're going to go through and relay everything so that drains into that far drain. But if you're going to come through and change the sidewalk and potentially get rid of that entrance. Well, remember, this is a, also a parking authority project. This is not a DPW sidewalk traffic project. So the parking authority started this project to improve the lot. And um, what the city was able to do it since they are doing the lot is to improve the drainage just in this area. So now, the limits of the construction is within the lot for this project. It's a part of our project. You're working with Condat now, though, and that's a state road and a state sidewalk. Right, yeah. but you know the way Condat works is that we have project limits. Like right now, the lot bridge has certain limits. Now, we'll take comments back to the department, and maybe it fits into another project. Well, I think what she's trying to say right now, it doesn't fit the city project, and it's not within the lot project. Yeah, I, I guess if you're taking comments back on the suggestion, I'm going to play the little bit here. I, I don't see where any, I mean, I can understand where the residents and the businesses in Liberty Square are proper might feel that that's advantageous. I think it would be extremely unfair to the business that's located right there because then he would have any of his deliveries and his customers would have to go all the way through Liberty Square to get to his If it's closed. And he's not getting the service of the parking lot and all the rest of the stuff. So you don't want to Well, I'm just suggesting that there's other stakeholders yeah. that, you know, have, are going to be impacted. That's a huge disadvantage to an operating business there. So they're, Bill's uh, here, so. Oh, yeah. <coughs> like plastics, is yeah. this? Yeah. Oh, okay. our, our trucks actually come in through the main entrance. We very rarely get a truck coming in through that side entrance because you can't make a turn into the, uh, into the front of our shop and the alley is not big enough to get a truck down. So that goes across the back of the building, which is another concern is, are you going to enforce no parking in the back of the building? That's both a, that. a right of way and a fire lane. Yes.
documents of Patty Sticks coming into that area? I'm sorry. Do we have, I don't know if we have any access, but we can get that. We can look at that. Um, Mike Bilstrak's not here right now, but we can certainly look into that. Well, I mean, we would have that. And when the car is here, can you look at the car as far as you When this major car is going to take place? Yeah, what we talked about is after the construction is complete, it's um, the parking management plan for the And it will be put in the papers and made Yes, known yeah, that everybody will be noticed in advance. So just like this meeting, where we noticed everybody to death, we were handing out notices, we did social media, we did press releases, we posted it on every um, the, the websites, but yes, we'll be, everybody will be noticed about it. Oh, uh, you said something about closing both lots and the pavement. How long is that going to be? Three weeks, right? About two to three weeks. I think we closed one three weeks. Right the so they'll both be shut off. Nobody will be able to get into the business. They, no, they'll be able to buy quality. <laughs> That's it. No, but you know, we'll be able to probably accommodate some of the deliveries. You know, we will kind of figure it out something when we're on site, but we're not going to have any parking there. The parking will be. We move to the yeah, other side of the road. Across the street. But yes. Three ways, yeah. You can't do one side and then the other side. Yeah, that's right. For able to accommodate the rest yeah. of some of the people. No. Why? And I'll tell you why. why. Because we have to bring all the concrete and we need to excavate throughout the lot. Unfortunately, there are a lot of utilities burning there, so we have to come all the way here, cut it through feet here, feet here, and feet here. And then we need to mill everything. So in order to get in and out, we're gonna do both at the same time when we disturb. As soon as we can, we're gonna give that to you. If we have one lot ready, that one opens right away. That's gonna be a hardship for those businesses there. But that's why we're providing parking across the street. Who wants to park across the street? We're all walking feet now. <laughs> I say, can I just say,
start laid out? As soon as we are done with the drainage between the week of the 24th or October 1st. Is there going to be somebody there saying you cannot park in that area? There will be signs. That you cannot park there? Yeah, if there will be signs, then we're going to close here, here, and here. Yes? How does that benefit the, the business owners, uh, knowing the fact that the clients are going to feel pressure, you know, and Knowing that they have to pay the parking meters and the business service, how does that benefit? Are we, are we done with the construction of the site? Is there any, are there any other um, questions? Questions. What they have to pay to park at the park? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. During the construction, no. Construction question. You said that the parking lot should be close to the communities, but Goldstein still has access? Yes. So the only thing that Goldstein doesn't have we'll have one alternate lane is the drainage being done. But both seem we're not going to be affected. It's just during this first week, week and a half, because we are having some drainage construction there. After that, they have to be out of there so we can do the lot. So this space will be open. Just the lots here will be closed. And so will cars be allowed to pull in and drop off into your buses? Yes, yes, they will be able to. They will just have to kind of maneuver them to come out. So will they be able to turn around and go back? If they drop off? Yeah, the commercial vehicles were coming up in here. They back up in either alley. They were turning around today. It's easier to go turn around back behind in the alley than it is out on the front. And there was a track trailer that came in to deliver something to the bakery. Because this part we're not going to get the paving. The paving limit is at the end of the lot, so that's why we are only closing the lots. That is closing in the paving as well? No, no. It will eventually. We have to, we're repaving the area we disturb. Yes, just the area of the drainage. On a temporary basis. So the trench will be repaved when we're done. But ultimately, at the end of the job, we're just going to be completely. The uh, exit to Goldstein Place. All right, if you're doing striping, is there any way that we can get a left-hand turn lane coming out of Goldstein Place? Because there's right now no markings at all, right or left, and people taking a left-hand turn park in the middle of it. You can't get around them, and quite often it's five minutes before they can take a left-hand turn. If they have a left-hand turn lane coming out of Goldstein Place, it would make a huge difference getting out of there. Especially during rush hour. Well, we can take that in consideration. That, but that has to go through a different. Uh, we have to bring this to the traffic authority and see if they will allow us to put a sign there. Okay, somebody will bring that up. Yeah, we're writing it here. Okay. Anything else related to the construction? Those pay stations there 
but 58 parking spots, but for years they have not had any. I think it. now it's part, do you guys want to talk about the, the management of the parking? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so more are we done with questions related to the construction, everything? Okay. Pardon me? You're, you're to, are there any other questions related to the improvements in the construction? No. Okay, at, not at this time. Okay. Do we have any choice? <laughs> so, <laughs> if you have a choice to continue to talk about construction, sure. <laughs> if you like. <laughs> no, I'm actually. So, okay. it's such a hardship on the tenants now and the, and the uh, I don't understand it. So for many years, I mean, I've talked, like I said, I've talked to so many of you for so many years, and one of the things that kept coming up is we need to better manage this parking lot, get better controls, have some regulations, because there are people that are going to Best Park, parking there all day, there are people that leave their cars there for weeks, for months, there are people in the surrounding area, in the residents and the condos that leave their car and park there. And with the Walk Bridge project coming up in Eversource, it's critical that we get, that we better manage this parking lot. So it will be managed through um, transient parking, monthly, 15 minutes, provided by through, like we talked about, the pay stations, pay by cell, and monthly permits, and a shared parking type of method. Uh, we don't know what the activity is going to be, because we just don't know, because there, there are people, like I said, that are parking from, they go to Vets Park, they park there, they park um, from other places, and we don't have a handle yet on exactly who's visiting who, where, and it's something that we would like to find out. We um, own this property over here on the left-hand side, and we don't seem to find that a, a problem. You okay. don't. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it's a big problem. Okay. Where are they coming from? What you but said just to people that sit in their cars all night, they drink, they don't, they don't visit any of the, the businesses on the right side. They, they just hang out all night. So you can't call the so police. So that's the police department to settle that. No, no. they, they'll, they'll leave their cars there for days, and the police will come and be like, it's a registered vehicle. Why can't they, they tag them? They won't tag them. They stop that. They used to have a, a line just for abandoned vehicles in this town. They no longer have that line in the police department. What line? They used to have a number. When you call the police department, a non-emergency number, they would say to report an abandoned vehicle, hit whatever uh, number. That um, no longer exists. I volunteer on West Avenue, and there are four parking spots, two-hour parking. It doesn't say it, but they mark your tire, two hours. And you better move your car, otherwise you're going to get a ticket. I used to work on Wall Street. Why, thing, can't, right? why can't they do something so like that? Thing, just so you know, so you're aware, on Goldstein, the other issue is parking along here. There's people that park here also all day long. So these will be regulated. And behind on the alley, there are half of the alley is owned by the city. The other half is owned by the state. And there's an issue with the alley because people are blocking driveways. They're blocking um, the garages. So that, that will be enforced. Goldstein Place in the alley will be enforced. So that doesn't happen. And you're close at what time? Uh, the alley belongs to the state. Half of it does. Yes. And yes. 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 half belongs to the state. 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 Half belongs to the yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, based on my square footage, I own two and a half parking spots. So as a business owner or someone who has a residence there, how are we, are, are we given any parking? No. no. Or do we have monthly to permits, yeah, the, there'll be monthly permits. Mm -hmm. oh. That will be determined by the parking. And that's a hard to on your tenants. I just move out. I just move out. Store orders move out. Again, the issue that. We have nothing. I understand. For 68 parking, 58 parking spaces. So is it worth it? And the money you're putting in 50 meters in Yes. This is what you're talking about. This is what you're talking This you guys pay for this. You guys pay taxes on this. We do. So are they still going to be charged for those spaces? 
Caleb, where is his face? They're imaginary. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like when the, when the restaurant when used to buy it. So the question is again, she pays for two and a half spaces in taxes. That, that's, no, that, 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 that's a misconception. You probably, that's probably related to your zoning permit. Right. And I, that, that has nothing to do with the management of the parking lot. Those two and a half spaces, you don't, they're not designated to you as part of you being able to get your zoning permit. I know, my yeah, point is, so as, yeah. as a business owner right. and as a resident of Liberty Square, we should have free access to parking. Absolutely. Right, and you still have the problem of managing the parking lot, which you, know, you, you mentioned as well, where people are parking there all day and all and weeks head on in, months on in, and they don't move. There just needs to be, there's got to be some kind of, you know, if it is metered, then, you know, maybe there's just fixed areas that are for residents or people leasing. And, or if there aren't meters, there's got to be a better way to lease the parking. I mean, it, maybe you can enforce it and give out parking to us. You know, like, there's no enforce it and give out parking to us. There's no enforce it and give out parking to us. There's no enforce it and give out parking to us. There's no Right, we don't know what that is yet. That's right. If, if, if you have 
two spaces per unit. Small front apartments. Yeah. Just on the right side of that picture, you have 40, you need that 48 parking spaces. So you don't even have enough parking spaces for full-time people to live there. But, but do you guys park there now? All yes, yes. yes. So there's 48, and I can meet out the left side. But you guys park there now. And it doesn't seem You're to be there. a And we're on the left side. And, 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 and it works out. Yeah. Well, where is now? Where are we parking? There needs to be some sort of management of some sort. That's right. We, we have a problem. You're constantly picking up liquor bottles. You're constantly dealing with the people that are sitting in the car drinking. Right. People are sleeping there. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You yeah. constantly yeah. have a limousine guy that keeps up in the condo and sending a housing authority and parking three and four cars in there. We need some sort of management, but we don't need pay stations. If you put pay stations in, you're going to lose everything. Yeah. The stores, the liquor store alone, they go in and buy a, two, a, a $12 bottle of wine and come out and get a $35 ticket. They're not going to come back. Or have to stop and put money in a pay station right. and go to that liquor store. Yeah. But, the same, but, same, but that's where, that's where the same thing with the bakery. Right, but yeah. that's where, within the management plan that Catherine keeps mentioning, one component is 15 minute parking. So it's exactly for that. Anywhere, so it's not going to be designated spots you can stop parking. Well, we don't know where that is, but yeah, we we're going to have 15 minute parking rights for something like you. Did you have to do a better job? Because you have 48 people. Are just on the right side that are going to use parking spaces. Right, but you guys are already parking there now. It works today. Right. Right. It works today. Right. It works today. Right. 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 But nobody's paying. you got to start paying or people are going to get fined. The tenants are going to move out of the apartments. Absolutely. And, and the, the, the store owners are going to lose because if they get a ticket, they're not coming back. But doesn't, go to, doesn't a lot of what you're saying come with the idea of it being a legitimate parking lot that it's now going to be managed? No. No. We, do we do it now. We take care of the parking lot. We do the snow and the snow cone. We do the snow and the pick up. And Curry Taxi just takes care of that. They have a big sign out there that they can clean it up out there. And if I go there and I see bottles and litter, I call them up. Well, there's a lot of time. There's a broken bench here. They come over and they clean it immediately. Oh, well, my brother's here every day cleaning up. Jack, it's, I need to ask this question. We deal with it now. We don't need, we need to deal with the snow. Current policy of the parking is heavy is snow saying we have that on well, surface lots the state with the snow, shuttle. there is no overnight parking and you have residents that are using the lot. Are you going to waive that requirement? We're going to have to work that out, yes, to, to try to do something because the issue is how do you snow plow with all of the parking spaces? Yeah, no, that's a good question, Jackie. How do you snow plow if all of the parking spaces are taken up? So we're going to have to work something out like who gets park and everybody else. It's, it's no different than everywhere else where we have people moving into garages. And it just becomes an issue to the whole city. The existing conditions, there are some negatives and pluses, but residents currently are able to park overnight in the surface right. lot currently. Right, and so they probably don't plow the whole thing, but yeah. So we'll have to work that out. It's a good question. It just come up. Yeah. I know your hands up for 10 no, minutes, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, like everybody, everybody, you know, I took to them a lot, of, I asked a lot of questions. Everybody should get their turn. Of course. I just, um, I'm a little bit flummoxed to try and understand how it's perfectly viable to manage a 15 minute space, but you can't use the exact same mechanism to make them make it two hour parking without pay stages. How are you, I mean, how are you enforcing 15 minute parking? We have to enforce it. It's very difficult to enforce so it. So if you can chop a 15 minute tire, you can chop it, chop it, chop a tire. It's, it's very hard. difficult to enforce 15 minutes. I mean, yeah. So. Show me what's going on. No, no, no. I, but I mean, but the the fact, what happens is the fact that the sign is up there, it does, and it says parking, you can say things 15 minute parking or retail only. So that alerts most people that are parking, it alerts someone that that's what it's for. But yes, it is very difficult to, to manage. But you're going back to this right. common problem. When they, right. if somebody sits there with, with beer for four hours and they go in that spot, you're back to calling for enforcement. Right. So, so you can do that. Why can't you just do a coordinated two-hour parking plan? 
And give that tickets for those two hours? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Do you do do that that you that? That? For now, yeah. yeah. For now. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, I don't know that question. Diane just got here. first time. Yeah, I love her question. <laughs> Anyway, snow removal, cleanliness, 
a system that works, that's safe, is something that everybody asks about so right as being worthwhile. Okay, is there any mitigation plan for the loss of business revenue during this construction period for any of the businesses that are there? No. The parking is available across the street. Not from a parking standpoint, from the whole construction project. You can include even the walk bridge? Are you, are you including the, the, the drainage? The drainage? And the drainage? Not that I'm aware of, no. Is there a possibility that there could be a fund set aside for that? Well, that would have to be discussed with the state. We should have thought of that. Well, the state piece is such a little, the state piece is, doesn't really impact parking. Things. Um, we're insurance office. Um, if people come in and deal with you with a plan, with a problem, 15 minutes is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's impossible. The next thing is, next to us, there's a nonprofit organization that has meetings with a great deal of people that come. They're talking 40 people come to those meetings. Where would they park? Do they park there now? Yes. yes, but it's at night time, okay. and usually the people that have the businesses are gone, but would they, it's going to be metered all night. So if they're there for an hour, they're going to have to pay, otherwise they've got to pay. So I just want to understand, so everybody's parking there now, and it seems to kind of work, right? right. And they, when these meetings happen, they're still, they're, they're still working, right? right? Yeah, that's a Seaport Association. Right, I, I know, I know, I know for you. But the, you know, I'm, I'm part of that, and um, it gets a little chancy. But because there's the different, like the insurance office is closed, the liquor store is closed, because the meetings are put at that time. Where would the people that are going to attend these so meetings park without getting a ticket? So that's what I was talking about, the shared parking method. I don't know what that is, but you've enlightened me that you have parking during the day and there's some it's some parking during the night for different functions. So that's part of how we need to evaluate what that shared parking arrangement or method is going to be. And Catherine, also, with the parking management <coughs> plan, could it include different types of, of, of um, permitted parking? <coughs> From business hours to evening hours and then overnight hours, I mean, there's like three different categories there that, that people need to park. Right. So the, the, the management plan wouldn't necessarily have to be one type of, of management spread across all three, right? Correct. Okay. No, you're absolutely right about that. Yes. You can tear it, you can make, yes, absolutely. So there's, so that would accommodate, theoretically that would accommodate the different uses, the businesses during the day, the business hours of the evening, and then residential uses for overnight. The key here is, and I'm glad we had this meeting because this was very important for us to hear all of this, is the fact that some of you have said that, well, there is, you're all using the parking during the day and at night, you still have the issue of the, the, um, the limo guy, three trucks or three cars parking there and never moving. You have trucks, you have people that are parking there and nobody's enforcing anything. So we need to come up with something that makes sense for all of these different uses, and that's what we're going to do. Just me again. It's fine, I'm <laughs> going to just you again. Uh, there have been two different sections for the parking. One was to put in your, policy, your, your uh, license plate, your plate number. Another was that you put in the number on the ground and you record that. Which one were you thinking of? Well, we had um, uh, the pay by um, uh, space, and that technology now is antiquated. So we moved, this is citywide, we moved to the pay by plate about three years ago. That's citywide. What does that mean? So you put your license so plate. It's, 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 it's also pay okay by cell. We so if I'm only there less than 15 minutes, oh, do I let it know when I leave? No, you don't have to let me know anything. So what is it going to charge me 15 minutes right now? No, you don't. You just, you don't, as long as you come and go, in 15 yeah, minutes, you don't do anything. Right. Oh. Well, so again, yeah. 
Yeah, it yeah, worked for me. But it, not for the restaurants. You can no. take the 15 minutes to look at a menu and decide what you want. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, so the 15 two, minutes is three restaurants. Right, you're not going to kill it, that business altogether. Well, you're not going to have 15 minutes for a restaurant because you're going to sit down and eat for a couple hours, right? Is that great? So it would be like a two-hour kind of yeah. three hours. So how much would it cost for two I don't, That again, that is something that the party. You put that on top of your your meal and your kid. Okay. Right. That's something that the party is always going to have to decide. Well, all of us. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's been going on for Diane, the, the, right here. Two questions. Are there members of the authority appointed members? Yes, Eric Rings. What's that? I just want to identify the appointed members of the authority. So the meetings are the second week of the month or fourth? The fourth. Okay, so you have one coming up. Yeah, November. Okay. So I'm just trying to think logistically. And I know you follow all that online. The well, when we can find it. So I'll leave it oh, at that. You can find mine all the time. <laughs> I'm just trying to think logistically because there's also members here I see of the East Norwalk Business Association, mm -hmm. the Neighborhood Association. We've coordinated these types of forums in the past. I don't want to speak for these guys, but maybe something could be pulled together in the next four weeks. When you say you have to go back to the authority, we don't kind of leave with a plan tonight of how that may happen. So that this whole other session of the real details get to work out right. again before you just continue to advance whatever contracts were awarded. Yeah, well, well, we heard what you had to say, and we'll um, talk to the parking attorney about that. And we, at the September meeting, or? Uh, that would be the soonest that we can do that. 